Hello everyone and welcome to another little video. This one all about strokes. So what are they, how to use them, and a few power tool tips uh, in there for good measure. Okay, so I'm going to hide myself now and then we'll jump straight into, uh, into the tutorial. Okay, so here we have in this scene a little skull. This is Skinner, um, the character, and in one uh, frame he has an outline and in another frame there is no outline so i'm going to talk about uh, the stroke as a you know as a sort of function in the software and what it does because if i go to the drawing view it makes things a little bit easier to understand sometimes because it takes it from under the camera and puts it just as a drawing so you can't see any compositing or effects of things going on so this is a good a way to problem solve now when I look at this, this here, this line is actually, if I zoom right in when I click on it, there's an orange thin line going through it. That is the stroke. That's the mathematical line created by the computer because we're working in vector, which is like a mathematical way of the software creating um, shapes and things. And that's how it's, um, you know, lossless. So basically, if you scale this up, it will stay the same quality. The computer is using this stroke to add the thickness to it. Uh, so that's the thing that the stroke is. It's kind of an invisible line, but then the software adds, you know, thickness or lines or whatever texture to it. So this one here, this one's easier to see in the camera view, this one here has no um, outline on it, but it still has a stroke. You can see if I click on it, it's a fill, but it's contained within the stroke inside that invisible line. So, um, you know, if you have an outline, if you draw something, anything like a like a box like I'm going to draw here, and then I was to fill it in with something. Oops, that's not the right tool. If I fill it in with something, um, if I wanted to get rid of that outline, you can just click on it with the black selection arrow here. I just click and press delete. It gets rid of it. And that's the, the quick way that most people get rid of things. It's the same for if you want to get rid of the fill. You just click on it and delete it. That's the, the quick and easy way to do it. If, however, you have um, got rid of a stroke and you need to get it back, so for example, in this instance here, um, I have to add a stroke back to this. How do I do that? Well, um, there is a trick to do this, and I'll show you um, in the drawing view because it's going to make more sense if I do this when I can split it over these art layers. Now, if I select an object, that's going to allow me to add a stroke to this using a, a special kind of function in the software. But first of all, before I need to do that, I need to deselect everything and choose the color. Because if I have it selected and I choose the color, it will change the actual shape. So I'm going to choose the skull line here. Then I'm going to select this. See how it's still got the skull line selected. And if I right click on this and go to convert and strokes to pencil lines. Now, this is less than ideal because, I mean, it's worked, but it's put the, the stroke around everything. So if I go back, if you look at this, the, there's orange lines around here, around the nose holes, around the eye holes, everything around the, the highlight. So I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do, and this is more of an illustrative technique, uh, it's, it's for kind of when you don't have too many drawings you need to apply this to because it's going to be a massive pain to do this to a massive sequence of animation. Um, you could use this tool, apply to all, and, and do mass selections. But when you've already got artwork in there, like the teeth and things, it's going to be very difficult to select on hand-drawn animation. So this is more for, for rigged animation. But in a, an individual uh, sort of image like this, I'm just going to click on the head. I'm going to copy it, so Control-C, Command-C. I'm just going to go to my overlay and Control-C, at uh, Control-V or Command-V to paste it. And now... If, I, by the way, before we do this, if we go to the pencil tool and we up this to maybe like 20 thickness and then we select it, when you do the right click and convert strokes, it will use whatever you had set in that pencil tool. Yeah. So now we have this, but the good thing is I can now just very easily delete the fill, delete these lines I don't want. And if you have something like this where it's, uh, it's kind of all connected up, just change this long click on the black selection arrow and change it to the cutter. And then you can cut pieces out. So you can dr uh, drag a shape around it, around the cutter, the thing you want to cut, or you can just cut through. 
then back to the selection tool and I could leave that on there and it will look perfectly fine I mean it's a bit thick but it allows me to just with the overlay selected the artwork the art layer I can uh, select the artwork and lower this down so that's much more kind of what I'm after and they can do the same for the for the jaw so that's how you get a stroke back in there now the the hoops the things I went through there to do that were quite complicated because um, I had to select the the fill and paste it on the overlay art uh, art layer and then you know delete certain bits and so on that's that's why you want to try and avoid um, getting into that if you're drawing things with strokes uh, and you're filling them in you ideally don't want to delete them unless you're absolutely sure you're not going to use them um, and if you feel like at any point you are going to need them there's a real nice trick that you can do as long as you manage your colors correctly so if we have a line that's going to be um, you know maybe made invisible and i maybe want times when i use the line and i want it to be visible just make a duplicate of this by pressing plus yeah so i clicked on the the color I'm rearranging it. And I'm going to call this skull line um, in Visi. So to change the color of it, I'm going to have to select it again with this black selection arrow and make sure it's set to that invisible line. Then what you can do is you can just double click on this color swatch and lower the alpha all the way down. So from 255 all the way down to zero. That makes the line invisible, even when we render, it's not visible. But if we ever need to bring the outlines back, we can just bring it back up. And, and that's a really cool trick that I tend to use a lot if I you know, think I might need this or I'm, I'm kind of working on something on a character, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Again, often when I'm using the software, like an illustration package more than straight for animation. So it's kind of whilst you're figuring stuff out, it's a handy little thing to do. The final thing I want to show you is how to recolor a line whilst protecting other things. So say, for example, we wanted to recolor the line of these teeth to be, you know, maybe a more of a kind of like a, let's go to this one, like sort of a gross uh, <laughs> dark green color. So I'm going to call this tooth line. And I want to recolor these black parts and I'm going to use the ink tool, which is a sub selection of the paint tool. You could use the paint tool as well, but there's a danger that you'll color in actual fill. So if you use the ink tool, it will highlight just the lines that you can color. But again, there's a danger that I can color things that I don't want. I don't want to color the skull line. I want to just color the teeth line. Now this is where the protect color function comes in. So I'm going to right click on skull line and choose protect color. Now I can't color these ones because they're colored in that, but I can color all the the black ones, I'm using the wrong color, so I need to change it to my um, my tooth line. Let's bring this up here. It sort of wigs out a little bit when you, you try and drag things on the palette, so don't worry, that's just a Toon Boom quirk, I think. Uh, but now we can drag through these. Uh, I can drag all over, kind of just paint through it, really, and it will recolor those lines. Now there's an ordering difference there, there's a bit of an ordering problem. Um, which would require me to kind of like click on parts of the lines, um, bring them, you know, you can right click and choose arrange and bring to front. And I could bring the, the tooth lines to the front. Um, we're getting very much into the nitty gritty when they're doing things like this. But uh, this is how, you know, it's a, a good example of how the software can be used as an illustration package because you can, you can rearrange things just like a lot of things. A lot of other packages um, you can bring them forward if you've got a bit of a gap like that maybe this needs to be set to um, in the tool properties a rounded start and finish and this will cover the gaps same here so after a little bit of playing around I've, I've, I've managed to get this working a little bit more but make sure you've got just line selected and then you can change the the kind of the start and the end to be a rounded shape like I have here. So we've kind of gone a little bit wider than the idea of just working with strokes, but it, it all comes under the same bracket of how to get control over your lines and get yourself a happy little head or drawing or whatever you do with it so that you can kind of use the software a bit more like an illustration package if you need to, or just create really nice frames for animation. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you and I'll see you in another video soon.